If you are ever in Puerto Rico, you have to take a bomba class by the legendary Sheila Osorio, an Afro-Puerto Rican bomba dancer and cultural manager. She usually holds classes on Saturdays for about $20. But what exactly is bomba? Bomba is the traditional Afro-Puerto Rican dance that has been around for over 400 years. It was created by enslaved West Africans who worked in sugar plantations along the coast of Puerto Rico. Bomba was one of the only ways for enslaved people to express themselves freely and feel powerful. Africans are believed to have released feelings of sadness, anger, and resistance during dance gatherings called bailes de bomba. Bomba was also used to celebrate baptisms and marriages, communicate with each other, and plan rebellions. One of the things that makes Bomba unique is that the dancer sets the drummer's rhythm. Look closely at this drummer. See how he's responding to the movement Shayla is making? So today is what, day three, I believe, child, in Puerto Rico. So we are getting ready to go dancing. We're gonna go do some Bomba lessons at the beach. And then what else are we gonna do? We're gonna go walk around old San Juan because I wanna know the history of this place. Never been to Puerto Rico. I mean, the mixture of the people here is just so beautiful. Dark, light, most of them speak Spanish and I love it. So I wanna know more about the history of Puerto Rico. So we are here meeting with the tea sippers. Good morning, everyone. How y'all doing today? Good, good morning, say hey. I'm doing my little vlog chat. Come on in, say hey. Good morning. You look good in your outfit. Oh, come and say hey. Good morning. Welcome, welcome. I know it's pretty, I like it's it. It's pretty, yes, yes. So officially this is day three for me in Puerto Rico because I got there a day early. Now one thing about Puerto Rico is that it is very hot. So initially I was wearing like, you know, just like a tank top and some leggings, you know what I'm saying, like some athletic wear, but I was like, you know what, it's only gonna get hotter. I'm going right back upstairs and changing into my dang on swimsuit. So that's why you see the outfit change where I go from what I'm, what I'm wearing in that first clip to me putting on a swimsuit. So we all got on the bus and of course we were singing on the bus, child. You know how we do. You left, I lost a part of me. It's still so hard to believe. Come back, baby. All right, that's enough singing. So now we're just, you know, really excited to get to the beach. And when I tell you, I felt such a strong connection to the town of Loesa. I really loved it. Like, I felt like I was back home. You know what I'm saying? I felt like I was around my Nigerian people. Just because this town is so rooted in their African culture, I love it. If you guys don't know, Puerto Ricans are a mixture of West African, Taino Indian, and also Spanish. So in the town of Luisa, basically... Um, they really hold on to their African traditions. So even some of the men that we saw there were dressed like how men dress in Nigeria. And I just, I loved it. The drumming, the beat. Our dance teacher is a world-renowned bamba dancer, Mrs. Sheila Osario. And I loved her. Miss Sheila was such a beautiful spirit. She was so friendly. She made everybody feel comfortable. You know, she taught us a lot about the history of bamba and how a lot of times, you know, during slavery... Because there were so many different slaves mixed in, right? They took us from all over West Africa, from Benin, Nigeria, Cameroon. And so a lot of us didn't speak the same language once we got to the Caribbeans. So in order for us to communicate, one thing about black people is we can communicate with, you know, music and the beat and the feeling. So a lot of the slaves used the bumba music to be able to communicate with each other so that way the white plantation owners or the Spaniard plantation owners wouldn't really know. And so 
they did that for a long time. Even the outfits, they would put like notes and just, you know, different things in their head wraps to move from plantation to plantation. So that was another way that the slaves got messages across. So they really hold dear to that because um, for a long time, I believe around the 50s, they had banned Bumba. They had banned the Puerto Rican flag, you know. So we just learned a lot of history talking to people in Puerto Rico. So these are very proud people. They, they really hold tight to the heritage. The food is good, honey. One thing about you Puerto Ricans, y'all sure can cook, okay? So after we got done dancing and doing all our bumba, we definitely sat and ate lunch, and lunch was delicious. So we had an amazing time doing the bumba lessons. <laughs> So 
but after our wonderful lunch, when I tell you the rice and beans at this place was divine. It was the best rice and beans I had in the whole time we were in Puerto Rico. The food here was really good. So at the lunch, Sheila told us that there was a carnival in town. And basically this carnival, they celebrate it every year. It's to honor St. James the Apostle. It's called Festi de Santiago Apostle. So we were able to go to the festival in Loiza. And she told us that she would be there doing bomba dancing later on. And so when she told us that, we're like, okay, well, hopefully we'll be able to stop by the carnival. So before we left, we took some pictures in our outfits with the flags. And then we got changed and we walked on the beach and we headed towards the bus. And so as we were heading towards the bus... Um, my bell was talking about these little fruits and I don't know how to say it in Spanish and she didn't know how to say it in English. They look like little limes, but they're not, I've never had them before. So she got off the bus to go purchase like four big bags for all of us to share. And like you eat them and you suck on them. So this is my first time. If you guys know the name of this fruit, y'all can write it in the comment section. Cause I totally forgot, but it was really, really good. Oh no, I think it's. I don't know the name. What It's a Saturday carnival. Hello. Okay. 
All of the different people in the crowd are able to come up and do bamba with the drummers. And so one of my tea sippers, honey, Miss Road, okay, representing the tea squad family, um, she got out there and she did her thing. And I loved it. You know, like we were just feeling the music. I was filming so I couldn't get out there. But, you know, she danced for me in spirit. And she killed it. Miss Arlene killed it. And then this little young girl ends up coming near the end and she did the damn thing. Like this was just, you just felt the spirit of the people. It was just really dope. Even watching this back made me kind of emotional because... Because it was such a, just a cool experience, very spiritual, the drumming, just the mixture of people, you know, you had the Taino people that were there, Africans, even the Hispanics, it was like a, a mixture and everybody was just there to support the culture. So this was a really, really dope carnival. <laughs>
So that was an amazing time at the carnival. And what was so crazy is that there were two of my tea sippers in the crowd. They recognized me. They were shocked to see me in Puerto Rico. They were a mother and daughter duo. And um, they just came and just showed me so much love, gave me hugs. And so thank you guys so much. It was wonderful meeting you guys there um, on the island of Puerto Rico. After that, we got back on the bus. Um, again, we were singing, honey. Okay, we're going to keep ourselves entertained. <laughs> So while we're on the bus, um, you know, singing and having fun, we would just run across random beaches. Like there's literally a beach everywhere you look in Puerto Rico. And so we decided to stop at this beach. I don't know the name of it, but they had like a huge outdoor cooking spot where they were like, I don't know, they were like grilling meats and frying fish and it was really dope. And then across the street, you had to go like kind of across the road or whatever. It wasn't a highway, but like a road to get down to the beach. So that's where we ended up going and we kind of chilled there. You know, I got in the water and everything and we took pictures and we just had fun. We did this before we went down to Old San Juan to go on a walking tour. So this was a really, really nice treat. We're at another beach. Oh, I see y'all. So we had a really good time at this beach. The water was beautiful. Um, we took pictures, we had fun, and then it was time to, you know, dry off and start heading towards the bus because we had to get to Old San Juan. We were excited to do the Old San Juan tour. And if you guys do not know, um, in Old San Juan, they are the ones who first invented the Pina Colada. So um, there's the first Pina Colada bar. And um, we tried to go and get a pina colada, but they weren't available. But I had a virgin one from the gift shop. So I went in as my aunt, my cousin, my twin sister. So I had about, you know, four virgin pina coladas. That's how good they were. I'm like, yeah, my auntie Sally needs one too. I think she suspected it was me, but, you know, no judgment. She just kept giving them to me, okay? But, yeah, so if you guys are ever down there, definitely try that. We also got a chance to try coconut water. I've never had real coconut water. The kind I've only had is the kind that's, is the kind that's in the carton at Walmart. So to have somebody crack open a coconut 
and put a straw in it. It was really good. It was my first time having it. And then the driver was so cool because I'm like, it's all gone. There wasn't a whole lot of water in there for me. And so he was like, oh, you can eat the coconut. So he bought the rest of my coconut shell back inside and had them break it and then pull the meat out. So I was able to eat fresh coconut. So it was really good. I really enjoyed it. So we finally arrived in Old San Juan and I did like it, but I'm not going to lie. I was disappointed because I had watched a few other people's videos on Old San Juan and it seemed like they got to do a lot more on their tour. I didn't really care for this particular tour guide. I felt like one, she was late. And then she told us when she first got this, like she kind of had an attitude and told us that we were her fourth tour of the day. Man, what that got to do with the price of tea in China? You're still supposed to act like we're your first tour, regardless if we're your first or your fourth. You need to have the same energy. It's like she didn't really want to walk into any place with us and really explain stuff. She just sat outside, explained some things, and then we'd have to walk in the building and try to remember what she said to us or have to go back outside and ask her questions when she should have been inside with us during the walking tour, really pointing stuff out. So me personally, I didn't think she was a good tour guide. You know, no shade, but, you know, we keep it real over here, honey. I'm going to give you that real tea. So for the most part, child, we just walked through old San Juan and figure stuff out ourselves. Um, there was a lot of cats in old San Juan. Y'all know I'm not into cats, but one thing I would say about the cats in Puerto Rico, they mind the business that pays them. They don't pay human beings no mind. They just lay there or they walk off. They don't want you touching them. They're not like American cats that are always begging and looking for a home and shit, okay? Them Puerto Rican cats, they mind their business. So I really was not scared of all the cats that were just roaming around. Usually I, I do not do cats. But I wasn't scared because they just literally, they would look up at us and put their head back down like anyways. So I really did like the cats in Puerto Rico, child. I'm telling you, Puerto Rico got me, you know, facing all types of fears. So anyways, we ran into this guy with these birds and Miss Monique and um, Deka, they decided to take some pictures with these birds, honey. When I tell you these birds were being super extra for no reason, but I think one of the birds was trained to like pickpocket. He was really trying to take her Fitbit, like literally trying to take her Fitbit. And I'm like, okay, bird, you better calm down if we had some parakeet stew, okay? But um, they were really cute though. So one thing I really wanted to go see, um, we got to go to the fortress, which I was, you know, really excited about that. But again, she just kept us at the edge of the fortress. From other videos I've seen on YouTube, people actually got to go inside the fortress and look at the cannons and, you know, pretend to shoot the enemy. We just had to sit outside the fortress. She didn't want to walk any further. So I don't know what that was about. But even though we didn't get to go inside the fortress, they were having some type of kite show outside. There had to be literally like 100 kites out there. I have not seen a kite in years. So it was really dope to see all these kites being flown by the fortress. Um, you know, it was just a beautiful day. There was a lot of kids out there tourists and everything else. I do wish we could have got to go inside the fortress, but nonetheless, we're going to take tea leaves and make some tea, okay? So after walking around the fortress area, we went down kind of by, they had like a cemetery near there. And I think that cemetery was for fallen soldiers who lost their, you know, lives during the war and stuff like that. And it was a beautiful cemetery. It's right there by the water. And their cemetery reminds me of cemeteries in New Orleans because people are obviously buried above ground because if you hit six feet or below, you'll hit water. So they have a lot of above ground cemeteries. So I thought that was very interesting. And one of the girls in the group, Janissa, who's from Louisiana, she said when she did a prior old San Juan tour, they told her that they kind of mirrored old San Juan after New Orleans because all the colors are really bright and it reminded me of Nola, like with the pinks and the purples and the yellows. And so she said that she was told by one of the tour guides on her previous tour that it was mirrored after New Orleans. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And then we ended up, you know, walking through a neighborhood, um, you know, people clearly lived there. We didn't take any pictures in the neighborhood, but then we got to like, I don't know, some kind of ruin or something like that. And it had a Puerto Rican flag. So we ended up taking some video and some pictures over by there. So that was really nice. So that is how our day ended. It was a long day. 
our feet were tired, we walked, we danced, but when I tell you day two of Puerto Rico was amazing. We had a good time in spite of the, you know, <laughs> lazy tour guide. We still had a really good time entertaining each other and, you know, taking pictures and just soaking in the information, the wealth of information that we got from the people that we talked to in Loesa. So, yeah, it was an amazing day. So, anyways, that is the end of day two. Make sure you guys tune in soon for my day three of Puerto Rico. Talk to y'all later. Bye. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show, bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.